Invincible is a brand new animated series on Amazon Prime which is based off a comic series of the same name. It's just finished its first season and my god, it is something. It focuses around a teenager named Mark who lives with his mum and dad. Mark's dad is a superhero named Omni-Man and it's only just now that Mark begins gaining his own superpowers and is trying to figure out how to use them and what the life of being a superhero is really like. I'm not gonna lie, Ever since Avengers Endgame, I've kind of been burned out on the whole superhero genre and haven't really been watching any of the newer superhero films or TV shows, which still seem to be firing out at a diarrhea's pace. I think the last superhero film I watched was the 2019 film Joker, which let's be honest, is less of a superhero film and more of a psychotic thriller. Either way, I was just bored of the whole superhero stuff. So when people started to recommend this new animated series called Invincible, I was like, No thanks! But people online and friends in real life kept recommending it and were like, No, this is really your kind of thing. Seriously, watch it. So I started watching the first episode and really wasn't feeling it. We got a kid whose dad is a superhero, kid discovers he now also has powers and dad begins to train him, there are other superheroes out there which are pretty much copies of Marvel and DC heroes, blah blah blah, seen this all before and then holy shit what the fuck was that ending? Alright, you have my attention, and yeah I guess that's why they rate it an 18. Seriously, this scene comes out of nowhere, and it's not just the extreme violence of it, but just the fact that we spent a fair amount of the episode learning about these various heroes and their backstories, and now they're gone. What, did George R. R. Martin have something to do with this writing? So the main plot of the series is the mystery of why Omni-Man, who's pretty much Superman, suddenly flipped and brutally murdered all the other superheroes. Was he being mind controlled? Blackmailed? Or is there a more sinister reasoning behind this? As the series goes on, it starts to slowly feed you clues on what might be going on, but never too much that it makes it overly obvious. And not only that, we also have other mysteries going on as well, such as with this other superhero team where there's this robot character, who's also up to some shady business. The characters for this show are very well written, and there's quite a lot of characters in this series, with various heroes, villains, and humans, yet they all manage to stand out in their own unique way. I like the two Blue Brother villains who are constantly arguing over which is the original and which is the clone. Never trusted the flawed calculations of a clone. Clone? I'm not here. And then there's this mad scientist guy who's like a social justice warrior as he's trying to destroy Mount Rushmore because the former presidents were racist oppressors. They were oppressors, racists, slave owners. Which again, I think helps break away from the usual hero and villain traits we tend to see. There are some weaker aspects of the show however. I don't really like Rex as a character as he's just a massive knob who gets pretty annoying. And the whole Mark and his girlfriend plot gets a bit boring too. It's the classic of, oh he has to keep jetting away to save the day, but he can't tell her that he's a superhero, so she gets annoyed with him for always being late, blah blah blah, you've seen it all before. But I do think the pros of this series far outweigh the negatives. Now let's talk about this series highlights, and that's the violence, because holy shit does this series get violent and gory. And I warn you, this is not for the faint hearted. You know that iconic scene I mentioned earlier at the end of the first episode? Well there's a lot more of that to come, and this is all helped by the animation, which overall is pretty damn good. There are moments where it does have some wobbles and some characters go a bit off model or some flight shots look a bit cheap, but they're not really important scenes so it doesn't really matter all too much. Now when it comes to the action scenes, it really pulls it off both in animated quality and the graphic detail. So I'm going to get into some spoiler talk now. If you haven't seen the series yet, I'd recommend not listening to the spoilers as the mysteries are a big part of the enjoyment. So yeah, episode 8, aka the final episode. Holy fuck did that episode not hold back. Mark getting beaten to an absolute pulp? You're fighting so you can watch everyone around you die. Think, Mark. <sighs> The pilot that Omni-Man blasts the face off? Mark trying to save the woman from the falling building only to have her arm ripped off? 
And of course, the moment Omni-Man holds Mark in front of the subway train? Like, Jesus Christ, they really went all out on this. I like the reveal where Omni-Man wasn't sent to Earth as a protector, but rather as a scout to prepare the planet for conquering, which is actually what I was beginning to lean towards. And you can actually kind of see this now when you go back and look at previous clips. You don't seem to understand. Earth isn't yours to conquer. But despite all the brutal violence going on, there was actually a pretty heartfelt moment where Omni-Man has that flashback to Mark as a kid and can't actually bring himself to finish off Mark. The whole episode was just an emotional roller coaster and really does leave you with a feeling of dread inside towards the end. One plot reveal I'm not quite sure on, however, is the robot's twist of him being a human who wants to clone himself into a younger body so he can win the heart of Monster Girl. It wasn't a bad twist per se, but I thought something a bit more sinister was going on, like he was trying to clone the superhero team to make them into a stronger and more reliable force. And even with him now being a teenager, it's still going to be weird as Monster Girl will continue to get younger and he will still continue to grow older. But who knows, maybe that'll be a plot point for future seasons. And also, yes, I just want to add, I know the series is based off a comic book and there are probably spoilers in there, but I would rather wait and see what the TV series has to bring. But as of now, the series has already confirmed seasons 2 and 3, which is awesome. The end of season 1 gave us some nice answers, but also left itself open for future plot development. I'll be watching these when they release, and I just hope it manages to maintain its high quality, and this season wasn't just lightning inside of a bottle. Stranger Things season 1. But yeah, I honestly didn't expect to be liking this as much as I did, but I'm glad I ended up watching it. Do let me know what your thoughts were on the series. Oh and uh, before you go, here's a bonus clip for all you non-tap water drinkers. And until the next one, take care.